So far on our course, we've only been using the stock textures. These are all black in our list. And if we click on them and go to the properties, you'll see it says standard type editing not allowed. So we can't change any of the settings if we want to make our mud a free drop. We can't because it's greyed out. We also can't change the texture itself. So if we want to make our own custom textures, put high definition textures in uh, at the moment, we can't do that because these textures aren't editable. So there is a way to create our own custom textures and I'll be describing this in the next video. And when we create them, they'll show up after the list of black textures as a green texture. This green texture is actually called green. <laughs> it's a green texture as well. Uh, that's just coincidence. So it's written in green. And if I click on the properties of this texture, you'll see I can actually change the properties, reflect. I can make it hazard. Uh, I can uh, go to the edit texture and I could choose a different texture for it, load in one I liked and then save it. So now we're at the stage we want to create some uh, custom textures. We need to understand the user library file, which is marked as user.lib in our main APCD folder. If I scroll down, you'll see down here, user.lib library file. And at the moment, it's 2768K. That's because that green texture I just uh, created has got a one high res texture. And so it's it's pushed the uh, file size up to three, three meg, roughly. So any textures we create in the property settings and the actual graphics of the texture themselves are all stored in this file called the user.lib. Now this is where the problems start because whenever a course is loaded into your APCD, the first thing APCD does is look through the course that's loaded in for textures that aren't in the user.lib and any that it finds that don't exist in the user.lib, it adds them to this file. Now, in some ways, this is quite useful. It means you can load in a course with some textures that you haven't got, and you'll then have access to them, so you could use them on your course. The problem, though, is once the user library is adjusted with these new textures, it will basically muck up everything you've done on your course because the way it stores the uh, the user library is in a very linear method and if anything is deleted or added to the file everything gets moved out of its right place and basically uh, APCD gets confused and it will think that one texture is another texture and all your textures get muddled up so as soon as you've got to the point where you're creating custom textures you really need to make sure you never load in another course into the APCD from then on because it will destroy your user library. If you really need to, you can temporarily create a new folder, pop your user library in that, load in another course, do whatever you want, then go back to your folder, take the user library file back out, copy it over the new one that will have been made because any course, if there isn't a user library, any course loaded into APCD it will create a new user library if it can't find one uh, and you can replace uh, the user library this way. This means if you're working on two courses you could keep swapping the user library of the two courses before you worked on it and you wouldn't have a problem. But this is a guaranteed recipe for disaster. You just need to forget to swap the user libraries over once and 
your course will be uh, messed up. So the best way if you want to work on two courses is to have two copies of APCD. Just copy the, fol the whole folder, the APCD uh, folder, copy it somewhere else, give it a different name and run the APCD from there. Uh, that's the best way if you want to do other things as well as working on your course. Keep one APCD specifically for your course and you won't have any of these problems. This user library will just get bigger and bigger as you uh, add courses. So if you want to grab textures of other courses, which is not the ideal way because you can't edit the textures once they're in uh, APCD user library. There's no way to edit them unless you can get hold of the new Lynx Extender program. There's a new Lynx Extender uh, version two that's available at APCD courses. Uh, if you remember there, you can get hold of that. You'll be able to extract textures from unlocked courses. Uh, if, like me, you're not a member, you'll have to find a kind Linkster who'll let you have a copy. Uh, and they are kind Linksters about, so find somebody who has Links Extender 2. I'm sure they'll uh, give you a copy if you need it. If I go back into APCD, if I load in another course, I'll uh, open. Don't want to save anything on this course. I'm done anything. If I go to my courses folder, uh, links courses. If I load in, let's say my Anakina Beach course. Okay, you'll see we've now got lots of green custom textures. There's seam blends, uh, other textures that have all been loaded in. So if I now close this, I won't save anything, but you'll see it's actually save the user library even though I didn't want to save anything there's no way of stopping it updating this user library it's now up to 69 meg because it's full of Anakina Beach textures so the next time I come to run the APCD even though I've not saved anything I've now got all these textures still in here uh, which can also be a real pain because I can't find the ones I want you know it can get very confusing if I've got lots of name textures of different roughs and fairways that I don't really know what they are. They're all part of another course. And if I've done this with three or four courses, you'll see it could soon, I could soon end up with 50 or 100 uh, green textures down this list. So it's not a particularly ideal situation. But the one thing we do gain from it, if we go into the properties, and the edit material, all those textures will now be in this texture list. So all my Anakina textures I could select now via these, all these AK textures here. And I could put those into the, the textures for my new course. So if we just load the first course again, the texture one. So if we do want to use some of these textures, one thing we can do if I wanted to say that track texture, if I select somewhere on my course, doesn't really matter where, just somewhere out the way. If I select that track texture and apply it, it's now, if I save my course, because any texture that's used in your course will be saved in the course file itself as well as in the user library, that will now get saved with our course. So if I save this and come out, that's now saved in the course. If I now delete the user library, 
So I'll get rid of that user library completely. If we've got no user library at all, then when we load that course in, the user library will be created with just the things that it finds on the course. So I'll open that test course again and we'll now find the green one has gone because I hadn't used it yet. It's been destroyed. But the trap one is there because it's actually present on the course. I can now change that back to whatever it was. I think it was just normal rough, the first rough. So yeah, if I just select that and turn it back to rough. I can now save that course again. It's back to how it was. But we've now got this track in our user library, so it will remain here. And we've got rid of all the other ones we didn't want. So that's one way of isolating if you just want two or three textures from a course, you can isolate them like that. And that will uh, get rid of the textures you don't want. Another problem though with the user library is if we load in a course that has, we already have a texture name in our user library with the same name, this causes another problem so if I load in a course at the moment, I've got this track texture, which happens to be called, um, where is it? That's not it. Let's select the track texture. This track texture is called BPFW3. <laughs> now, if I load in another course that happens to have a texture called BPFW3 into APCD, it could be a completely different texture, which originally this one was. It was a fairway texture, which is why I've got it called FW, because originally I had a fairway texture. I tend to swap out textures and leave the names uh, because it's quick and easy, and you can fiddle about with textures easy that way without building up a huge user library by adding lots of changes. If you keep changing your textures all the time, you'll find your user library. Obviously, every time you change the texture, the old one's still stored in it. So you'll end up with huge user library files. Uh, so I tend to just change the name. So this was an old uh, Batley Peak fairway texture, I imagine, BPFW3. Now, that might be just a normal grassy texture, BPFW3. Well, if I load in Batley Peak course into APCD now, if it's still got a texture called BPFW3 in, because the APCD will check my user library and add in textures that aren't there, it, it will find BPFW3 and say, well, ah, that is there, so I won't add it in. And when I add the Batley Peak course in, it will change whatever the grass is or whatever that texture is in Batley Peak to this dirt track texture. So if I then save Batley Peak on this version of APCD with this user library, I'll end up with this track texture that I didn't actually want. So you can cause some damage to other other courses, even your own courses, by putting them in the same user library. If they happen to have textures with the same name, I mean, you might just happen to by accident, you know, some people will call their rough texture rough one. Well, there's probably a lot of courses out there where the person's called their texture rough one and rough two. And if you load in one of those courses, then you load in another course, the second course will get overwritten with the first course's texture because it's got the same name. So that's another reason not to use your APCD for multiple uh, courses. So just to go over the first point again, once you've got your course to the point where you're going to start creating custom textures, if you're going to want textures off another course or courses, put them in, get them in the list the way I've shown you, add the textures you want to the course, and then come out and delete the user library. It will then recreate the user library again with just the things from your course, if there isn't a user library there. 
once you've done that from then on don't fiddle again later on if you change and add more and do the same thing again you'll cause problems because you'll have added things uh, to your course and it will mess up the library and you'll be in all sorts of trouble so do not add courses I can't state this point <laughs> uh, big enough do not add courses to your APCD do not load them in once you've started work on your course and got to the stage where you're using custom textures. <laughs>